have found a picture in a dusty old box of two lovers too young and no better. Their eyes were still bright with the freedom of night spent running around the world that felt bigger. Do you remember when you found that car? You said that we were gonna ride forever. And you pulled in the yard with your ragtop heart. Mama started talking about going to heaven. And we sang, take it out. Hey everybody, welcome to another Something in the Water podcast. I'm Uncle Dave Griffin, along with... I'm Sean Clark, and we are here with our guests, Matt McMillan and Jeremy King. From... Wilcox County. Wilcox, Wilcox County. County. That's in Georgia. That is in Georgia. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, we didn't... We like to kind of fly by the seat of our pants at this, uh, so we didn't do any research like Johnny Carson and Dave Letterman used to do. <laughs> I don't know what you so, can find on us, honestly. <laughs> so we just kind of like learning as we go. So <laughs> Wilcox County, tell us uh, where that uh, basically is, middle Georgia? It's kind of south-central Georgia. It's like uh, okay. if you see Macon on the map, it's yeah. about an, an inch. Below it on a map, <laughs> below the We're okay. like near Cordell on the interstate. Okay, okay. To us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, uh, the Reverend Blind Pearly Brown is from Abbeville, from from Wilcox County, or County yeah. Yeah. a blues he, player. Right. Yeah, man, he. Uh, he had what a was his name? Blind Pearly, Pearly Brown. Pearly Brown. He uh, he was mm. big on in Americas, and he would go up to Macon and okay, would perform up there. So. Did you ever listen to? Anything? I don't know. I don't, I don't know that name. Either. We're gonna have to check that out. What, what years was it? No, uh, he was active in like the 60s, 60s and the 70s. Yeah. Okay. Neat, um, neat. He was ranked. At, there's always been rumored that he taught like Dwayne Allman how to play slide or something. Uh, and, uh, oh. Yeah. He, uh, I might have heard He was the first right? African American to sing at the Grand Ole Opry. Neat. Actually. Neat. Play that's, Carnegie Hall. I had a pretty cool life, really. That's, that's wow. Wilcox County's claim to fame other than like meth. And so, <laughs> <laughs> well, outside of the drugs yeah. <laughs> and the blues, which they both go hand in hand. Uh, um, what is the town associated with Wilcox County? What, what? Rochelle, probably. Rochelle, yeah. Rochelle, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you boys uh, play music, obviously, <laughs> and uh, you play together. It's uh, Matt McMillan and the City Limits. Yes, sir. Is the name of the group. How long have have you been? Has that group been in existence? I think we're going on two years, maybe. Yeah. Two or three years, something yeah. like that. We've been, uh, as you said, flying by the seat of our pants for about two <laughs> years just trying to figure it out. Right. That's how what, how uh, many people are in, in the band all together? It, uh, <laughs> it differs depending on right. the time of the, the year, I think. But yeah, uh, I know, at the I know moment, that we're, we're rolling with a five-piece. Uh, <laughs> yeah, great. We've, I think pre-pandemic, we started uh, trying to go with a five piece with you know just a full band set up with drums bass guitar and pedal steel and uh it you know obviously the coronavirus kind of put a halt to all that but mm -hmm. it, we've we started picking back up with that recently do you uh uh i noticed you you said pedal steel when uh, <laughs> yeah do you, do you, does he get paid more for those extra strings? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, he, gets, he gets taken uh, taken for granted more, maybe. Yeah. I'm oh. supposed to get paid. <laughs> yeah, there's money involved. Yeah, pedal steel is 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 a monster. Yeah. I I still remember the, the day he he got it because we played music together for you know longer than two years probably, mm -hmm. and uh, 
just playing covers and bars and stuff like that. But I remember when he bought the pedal steel, I was like, man, we can finally get the sound I've been dying to get. Yeah. Now. <laughs> That's the instrument right there. So you had not had any prior experience when you bought the pedal steel other than having heard it, listened right. to it. I, um, I, pl- I played guitar for years. Yeah. Um, and I, I started playing like slide guitar and I play lap steel a little bit, mm-hmm. but, um, I just really, like I said, my wife was going to school in, in Athens at the time, and there were some musicians up there that I really, um, I got to know and like their music, and that just got my interest going in it. Yeah. Um, John Neff. John Neff, yeah. Is, is a big name pedal steel yeah. player from Athens. He's uh, He's been a really good mentor, friend to me <laughs> uh, throughout learning and everything. He yeah. was always kind enough to answer any question I had, and... Um, actually invented an instrument called the Mando Steel that Eastwood oh, wow. Airline Guitars is doing right now. And when uh, wait a minute now, John Neff invented. I, I you invented. Did. I you did. invented what now? It's called it's called the Mando Steel. And Mando Steel. Yeah, and it's a it's a lap steel that's strung up like a mandolin. It has like well, uh, it's like four courses, four courses of, of strings. strings yeah. Wow. Do you and, fret it or slide uh, slide on it? Um, but Eastwood started started uh, producing it and. Neff was kind enough to do the demo with me Neat. for one, so they, they sent us wow. sent us one for him to do the demo. That's impressive. So it, it was yeah. pretty cool. That's wild. So uh, have you? <laughs> I mean, you copyrighted, uh, patented, all of that kind of How'd stuff. That go? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no? that, well, you better <laughs> get it done, buddy. You better do. Yeah. That. Yeah. I, I snatched. I think it me. was. I, I talked to our lawyer buddy, and I think he. Uh, trying to get like a provisional patent or something. He was trying to handle it for me. So. Oh, well, by all means, man, jump on that. You need to get that done. Absolutely. So uh, It'll be documented here on this podcast. That's right. It's yeah. yours. Yeah. We, we might have to we'll cut have to play that section this out. <laughs> yeah, a week or two ago, I saw a guy in the Czech Republic was making them. That was, that was kind of <laughs> interesting. Really? <laughs> so, really? So, so. That raises questions for me. Is, is Did you invent it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you for real saw somebody else doing it? Yeah, someone else has already started making oh. it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did y'all uh, put out any... Ca- put out any kind of videos about it or anything? Yeah, yeah, you we did. did. Okay. I did so document it. it been leaked. That's and, right. That's yeah. right. Not printed on my emails, too, just Did in it case. sound like, you know, just a higher timber, uh, tonal uh, mandolin yeah, it's, type, it, uh, just a higher register? Yeah, it's got a cool sound to it. It sounds like a like a lap steel with a lot of chorus on it. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's got a unique sound to it, but you can do like tremolo picking and stuff the, on it still. The it's pretty, multiple strings. Yeah. The, yeah. It's pretty cool. pretty cool. Well, I've I always loved pedal steel guitar. Uh, in fact, some of the first music that I ever listened to was as a three-year-old. My daddy had a, a nice record collection, albums and 45s, and he was in the Air Force. So we had this beautiful stereo cabinet, console cabinet, made in Germany, and... Uh, and that's where I first listened to everything, and it was Hank Williams' oh, records. Man. I figured you were about what, to say that. What he had. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there was a pedal steel player in the Drifting Cowboys by the name of Don Helms. Don Helms. Yep. And it just so happened that me and Sean were in a in a an original uh, project here in Waycross back in the. Uh, 2003 through 2007 where we recorded this this uh concept mm-hmm. cd called uh blood in the pines the story of hollis shepherd and it was based on mm-hmm. a real story that happened uh in south georgia and we uh, changed everything yeah, the name took liberty stuff. with with the story and protecting the innocent, it, that it, one. It, protect the fire yeah. 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 They were still alive. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, just so happened that we had a, a buddy in uh, Nashville mm. who knew Don Helms. Was this computer guy? He was uh, fixing. He was fixing his computer for him. Jimmy was. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. And uh, anyhow, he messages uh, us and says, "Hey guys, you want pedal steel on those songs?" <laughs> A couple of songs on that CD, and he said, I think I can Well, get... he didn't play pedal steel. He, he just played steel. He played had, a lap steel? Lap, yeah. yeah it, was, it, it, was, it wasn't pedals. It, it might right. have had one, right. like the B 
or something. Yeah, yeah. Mm. One of those early. Yeah. yeah. That was and, almost uh, that like Hawaiian sound. It style. was. Kind of swing. Like yeah. Very swing, much kinda. the Hawaiian type sound. And uh, anyhow, it was like uh, you, we might have an opportunity to get Don Helms on your on your recording. And, and to us, like, it was oh, like, oh, man, a royal God. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> He's the last surviving member at the time. Yeah. And then... And then a few weeks later, it we was, hear back, and he says, man, I hate to tell you this, but Don Helms just had a stroke. Oh, And it man. was like, oh, Jeez. no. Oh, man. And then... He had two more st strokes. But smaller. time went by, and not that much time. It, a few months went by. A few months went by, and he, we hear back from our friend. He says, miraculously, Don Helms is pulling through this stroke. <laughs> well, well, the first thing out of his mouth was... <laughs> Don says, "Them way cross boys want to record or what?" <laughs> oh man, the answer is yes. So like we got there as quick as possible. <laughs> oh man, what a weekend that was! So y'all got to record with him. Yeah, that's awesome. In Nashville, I think it might have been his last recording. Pull your mic over to you a little more oh, yeah. there. There you go. Just tuck it, ang angle it towards you there. There like you that. go. Cool. And uh, uh, it was great. And uh, Mike, John, Mike, and Pam. Johnson uh, had access to a little uh, uh, seven or eight passenger plane. And, and and four or six passenger. <laughs> Might have been about yeah. six. Yeah. One of them little old. Cessless. Uh, yeah. And so four of us flew up there. Me and Paul were you running sound in North Carolina. We're running sound and drove on up there. We drove to Nashville from yeah. there. And, and then so, I flew back with y'all. Yeah. And so we got there on a Friday night and. Boy, we hit Nashville and, and Halloween. <laughs> it was Halloween too, and uh, it Hello. was crazy. <laughs> I mean, first thing we did was uh, went to uh, Broad Street, or is it Broadway? Whatever the main drag is. Yeah, and uh, landed in in a in in a great steakhouse. <laughs> Had the best steak that I've ever eaten. Then from there we went bar hopping. Wound up at. Uh, like Tootsie's and uh, that uh, Roberts uh, mm -hmm. or something boot and that boots uh, where they sell boots. And, and they also, you know, every little place up there's small and got a stage stuck right in front of the plate glass mm -hmm. window. Oh, absolutely. And uh, we bar hopped and, and uh, there was a, uh, a dude walking around with a, a half mask of Elvis on, <laughs> with the sun, the seventies Elvis. Well, it, was it was Halloween. So people were dressed. Oh up. yeah. He had uh, he had the the black bouffant pompadour, pompadour, the sunglasses, and the pork chop sideburns, and that was <laughs> it. That was it. That, and then you put that mask on, and you had you breathed through your own nose and spoke through your own mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Sean walks up and just rips the mask. No, I no, didn't. He, did. he borrowed it. He said, hey, you mind if I uh, no, borrow your mask? I didn't even something? do I, he, he offered it to me. He did. must have. Hey, there was, a, you there, were, there was you an Elvis <laughs> statue. Let me take care of this. There's a big Elvis statue on the corner that was always there. And then he was doing some stuff. And I, I, can, I can do the leg thing. <laughs> yeah. And so I started doing and But... Just like a movie, there was all these Asians with cameras <laughs> taking pictures of this guy, and then I got beside him and started doing the leg, and then they were all like, oh. and then he threw him the mask to me. That's how yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, anyway, it was they're the guests. Fan, it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I figured y'all come like back that next story. time. We'll oh, tell you. Yeah. <laughs> come back next time. We'll tell you about some more stuff we did. <laughs> well, I figured y'all would like that story because it was Nashville yeah. and Don Helms. Anyhow, yeah. the next day. Or Sunday, we we went to the house up there, and Don Helms came over with the legendary original console guitar Gibson that yeah. played on those songs. You That's know, man. He said, oh, God. still had it's it. called Old Red or something. Yeah, Old Red. yeah, yeah. I had to get it out of the car for him. It's a Gibson. Oh man, and, be uh, careful. Huh? And, and as I'm carrying it, he's he's like telling me, Marty Stewart offered me. Three hundred thousand dollars for, it. and I'm screwing in the legs, and I'm like, please don't cross through it. Like, oh my god, I'm freaking man. out. Man, like, oh, that's, that's incredible, though, man. Yeah, him and his it wife is. Hazel. Yep. 
Man. But that was our. But I've always loved the steel guitar. Anyhow, it's just a such an instrument. And so, uh, so when he said, "I'm fixing to tackle the steel guitar," you say, "Yes, yes, yes, yes." <laughs> I, it's funny because I was already listening to Hank Senior and, yeah. and you know a, a little bit of Graham Parsons and just oh. things like that with those cool. Cool. very pedal steel heavy. And mm-hmm. it, it wasn't until honestly recently I think that I heard there was a genre name for it like people are calling it now like alternative country or something mm-hmm. like that but mm-hmm. some of that some of that old hank stuff i was already really getting involved with and then he rolled up with I, that and <laughs> i was kind of late to the party on like the, the country music i always grew up listening to to rock primarily um and the, the like i said neff was my main influence getting into it but also ronnie wood i always mm-hmm. liked him mm-hmm. so that was well um <clears throat> How long have y'all known each other? Man, as long as so I can remember. Since middle school, high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's we, been a while. Right, growing up in a small town. How long have you played uh, music? I've been playing music since I was about 17, I think. Okay. He got into it much you? earlier. Um, I started playing when I was about 12. Okay, so when y'all met in middle school, you were already dabbling with it. That's right. And then you, like me... Was a late bloomer. I was yeah. about seventeen when I picked it up myself. Um, we actually we started playing in a, in a gospel band together called yeah. Sinners Bench. Sinners Bench. Yeah, that's right. It's a terrible name for a gospel band. <laughs> well, it's or not a, a good rock one. band. It might, it might be. It might be. People remember great the name. name for a bar band. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> we were we were kind of a weird fusion bluegrass kind of group. I don't know, like because I only played. When I was 17, the first instrument I ever learned was the mandolin, and I, and I still play the mandolin, but uh, yeah. it, it was actually a year or two until I learned the guitar, actually, yeah. and it, we got we came together at Center's Bench, though. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Center's Bench. Did y'all, I, guess, I suppose you played in a lot of churches. Then. We did. We, we did. did. Many churches across yeah. South Georgia. Yeah. Absolutely. And that was our only time in Nashville. Yeah. We, we went and recorded a record in Nashville up there. Yeah, As centers been. We did. Yeah. Which, ironically or humorously, we almost actually won a Dove Award for that, which is like the no gospel kidding. Grammy yeah. thing. Yeah, sure. the equivalent of the Grammy. <laughs> we were nominated, I think, but we, we did. That's we awesome. Did. And we really yeah. did everything to, to not be a good functioning band. We, we were not did. properly. We did. <laughs> not operate like a band. So what year would that have been approximately? 2016? Maybe? Yeah, somewhere in there. Okay. So really not, we'd been playing as that gospel group for a while. Yeah. And um, and our singer ended up, she moved uh, moved to Colorado. So we just, yeah. that's kind of when this it kinda, project kind of came to life. I started writing more song, like, you know, kind of stuff we do now and everything. Okay. Is that, that when you started writing after Center's Bench? Right, just kind of evolved more into it this. Was, it was actually pretty recent. I was thinking about it the other day that it, it consumes all my time now, you know, mm-hmm. just trying yeah. to write good lines but like mm-hmm. it, i didn't start until i was in college i think trying to write okay um what was your major in college i uh i got a degree from uh, valdosta in political science and mm-hmm. uh i thought for a long time i wanted to go to law school and do all that and when i was mm-hmm. in law school i was in Macon, and i realized that i was having so much more fun playing music and writing songs mm-hmm. <laughs> So I yeah. I recklessly dropped out to play music. Yeah, well, it'll get you once 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 music's got its hooks. It's right. a problem, really. <laughs> it's like, well, we better figure out how we can make this work because we're gonna go broke. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> well, as far as your uh, uh, your first songs, uh, were you? Uh, uh, did you do any writing in in the gospel group, or was that somebody else primarily that I did actually did um, some? About halfway through, you started. started about writing. halfway through, I so started. That would have been yeah. your first attempts at yeah, songwriting, right there. Pretty, pretty much right now, it, I I sort of with with gospel music. I don't know if it's bad or not, but I sort of realized there was kind of a formula for the writing those songs. And right. when I when I realized that, I was like, well, this is cool and all, but now I want to. Actually, try to do something that take it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. I want to spend some time on this. <laughs> secular is that? Yeah, is that, I never can remember. Secular. I think it's secular. Secular is 
Non, non religious. Non religious. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, as with just about everybody that we've ever had guests on here, started in gospel. There's that old, the church. That, that old correlation. It's the between region. It is. First, it is. first time I sang was in church. So. Yeah, of course. Between between yeah. Religion. <laughs> but you know, it's a, it's a it's a good foundation for it. Though, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you, you learn. I mean, that one, four, five. I mean, that's common in the yeah. hymns. I mean, that's. I think rock yep. and roll actually was sort of an extension. It was, it was like it, it, him, uh, it spiritual all, blues, stuff, country, yeah. bluegrass, yeah. all of it. You know, it was it rooted is, in gospel uh, at some point. And uh, or to and, a degree. and being from this area, this is the Bible Belt, and uh, so you you cannot deny uh, most people having grown up yeah. in the church or around it, close enough around it that it affects you. Uh, no doubt. I mean, Graham Parsons was the same way. You know, he was tortured. Yeah. He was a tortured soul, you know. He went through, as as many of them were, uh, Ray Charles, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, little he Richard. Had, he had mm-hmm. to try, Little Richard, Aretha, uh, you know. What's the, they all, Jerry Lee Lewis, the, they always had to the resolve. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Their being in, in rock and roll and pop music and everything and out in the juke joints and everything, they had to figure out a way. <laughs> it was, it was. Really working on them, pretty. It was pretty hard, you know, uh, and uh, to an extent, I, it did me too, you know. I mean, I, it's, a, that, it's, a, it's a guilt thing. It is. It know, is very much. A guilt it's something you have to balance for sure. Process, you know. Trying I'm the to work same way. That. Sometimes I get kind of, yeah. <laughs> it get, gets weighing on me sometimes too. Mm-hmm. I think there's a connection with, with you know the the music that comes out of the southeast with being in the Bible Belt. I mean, I think there's a connection there because, I mean, the music here is, I don't know, it's Someone's just got something in it. It's a little yeah. bit different. Sort of yeah. a pining thing. It is. When it's not yep. religious. It is. It's just... Mm. Yeah, I, I I sense that too, buddy. Yes. A longing or... Yeah. 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 Wasn't it on Sweethearts of the Rodeo that I like the Christian life or whatever? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. yeah that was, just you know, in the middle of that really cool country album. Yeah. Interesting <laughs> about that is the Christian life was a song that was written by uh, the Leuven Brothers, which was uh, uh, Charlie and Ira. Man, the and, harmony. Uh, mm. Oh, guys. And The man. album covers. <laughs> <laughs> Satan is real. Satan <laughs> <Bell, laughs> is real. And they're like, <laughs> Bell Buckle, Tennessee, I think was the name of the town that they were from. Oh, and uh, what's, what is uh, uh, pretty cool uh, to me is that uh, there is a, uh, a building here in Waycross called uh, the uh, – used to be called the Waycross City Auditorium. Mm-hmm. And there's a brick structure over there on Oak Street. And uh it's not called that anymore. Well they renamed it the uh C C McCray uh auditorium or performance auditorium, something like that. Anyhow, you know, mm-hmm. like things happen, you know. Mm-hmm. They take the original name and they give it the name of somebody from somebody. White Cross who was influential. Ossie Davis Parkway. Like Ossie Davis Parkway is <laughs> forever State Street to me, you know. Right. Uh, some things I just can't get out of the habit of calling it. But anyhow, when uh, Graham Parsons, the old White Cross Georgia boy, um, was nine years old in 1958, uh, 56, I believe it was, uh, he had the opportunity to go to the Waycross City Auditorium to see Elvis perform. And uh, opening for Elvis that evening mm-hmm. was the Leuven Brothers. Really? The Carter family. Uh, little Jimmy Dickens. Dickens, <laughs> I think, and some other guy. And, uh, and that's what uh, is amazing to me is that one night, he got to see Graham Parsons saw and heard a all of Brothers American American music and Elvis. Elvis, and that was country rock. You yeah, know, yeah. He he uh, got the harmonies from the Lubin Brothers. Yeah. He recorded his last albums with Elvis's band. Elvis's band, <laughs> yes. James Burton. So if that's not uh, full uh, circle, Ronnie Tut, uh, <laughs> Glenn D. Harden, man, phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, uh, that is uh, a little trivial tidbit right there. That is could be the the. Exclusive 
you know, had had that not the happened, keystone what of his it, career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which you know. man, it is sort of how you know, me and him have been playing music together for a long time now. But the the places that we came from musically are are almost kind of like that, which probably makes sense why we can meet in the middle with music like the Birds and Grand mm -hmm. Parsons and mm -hmm. stuff because yeah. he. He kind of showed me the blues and and the Rolling Stones and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I, I love came that up, stuff too. Yeah, I came up listening to you know like Hank Senior and the Carter Family, where gotcha. was a huge gotcha. thing so in bluegrass, you, particularly. You press that upon me. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah, coming together, I guess we had to meet at Grand Parsons. So. <laughs> yeah. Still can't yeah. get him to listen to Pink Floyd though. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Our new thing we we were talking about the other day. Dave said. We need this to be like Pink Floyd meets Hank Sr. on a dirt road, and they fight it out. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, could, I could probably get down with that. I yeah. can appreciate that. And then we actually got Don Helms on it, so it was pretty cool. I don't have any of those with me, dadgummit. I yeah. love to it's on Spotify. You know, give y'all a copy. Yeah, man, I have to check it out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you can just go you don't to... Have a, it's on Spotify, right? Uh, don't you have yeah, it somewhere? Oh, yeah, Spotify. And Streaming wherever. All kinds of places. Uh, you can actually listen. And uh, Reverb Nation, I think you can listen to it. Where can we hmm. find your music? Yeah. Spotify, um, Apple Music, I think it's on there. Amazon. Amazon, yeah. It's all the major. Yeah. 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 Awesome. We, uh, we have a little recording studio in Rochelle. We record out of and We kind of operate it as a label, too. Yeah. That's, your, that's your studio? Mm -hmm. uh, and our one of our bandmates in Center's Bench, we... Um, we uh, actually started it together, and now we work together at the courthouse in Wilcox County. So that's <laughs> What's the name of your studio? It's called High Rock Records. High Rock. Mm -hmm. There's there's a road. Uh, it's a, It might even be closed now, but in Wilcox County, there's a road called High Rock Road. We've got High Rock Road right over here in the neighboring county, Brady really? County, and that's might where all of road. my ancestors are buried. <laughs> really? Oh, really? Yeah, on High Rock Road right there in the same cemetery with uh, Lydia Stone. Oh yeah, oh, wow. the huh. old. Uh, I forget the name of the church. That, you said Berrien County is over. Uh, Brantley. Brantley. Oh, Brantley. Brantley, Brantley County is right outside this side of Hoboken. Uh, yeah, and Brantley uh, County met, make and call. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I, the, it's funny you say that. I actually yeah. in, in Valdosta I made a friend that uh, was from Hoboken, and he was he would always tell people I'm from Waycross because when he'd say Hoboken, nobody knew where that yeah, was. Yeah. That's New where Jersey. Frank Sinatra was born. Yeah, yeah Hoboken, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. That uh, you, you actually went to school in Valdosta. Uh, we know a lot of folks from over there, which uh, I'm sure that. Uh, Y'all and y'all being from Macon, we know a lot of folks from up there, so it's pretty cool that yeah. we've ended up. It's a small world, it knowing is. all of these same folks. I don't, right. I don't think the folks at home know this, but you know, you contacted us on online or whatever, and we started talking. So we don't know a whole lot about each other yet, yeah. right. mm -hmm. and so we come in here, and then it's like, oh, we all know the same people. That's <laughs> right. It's like it's pretty cool. Yeah, we mm -hmm. um, the studio actually had a our first music festival. Yeah, this okay. past year, September? the studio yeah, itself had a music. Yeah, festival. we had a music That's festival. Rock pretty music unique. Festival. Yeah, yeah, and um, and the Page Brothers. I know y'all had them on oh, here. Yeah. They came and played, mm -hmm. and um, those are good guys, good musicians. Yeah. Oh, and we, yeah. it's funny too because uh, we're we're trying to, I guess, bring the music scene together in South Georgia, maybe because I I invited a lot of my friends uh, from Macon to come down, and yeah. they we all met in the minuscule town of Pitts, georgia and like that's right had, had a music festival the only thing that's landed there since 1913 was a meteor that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and an alien or two and that's right yeah, so but, the uh the high rock festival was in Pitts. Mm -hmm. yeah where matt yeah. works uh at he, he works uh, yeah I've, <laughs> yeah since the pandemic i started playing music about a year ago and since the pandemic i you know didn't have any gigs and i took a job at something called Oliver Farm. Oliver. And Oliver Farm, yeah. Oliver um, Farm. A guy named Clay Oliver, the namesake of the yeah. company, started making sunflower oil several years ago. And uh, side note, it's actually yeah. kind of cool. You know, check it out because yeah. like Martha yeah. Stewart actually uses the stuff we make and random people like that. But, wow. How about that? But uh, they, were, they were like a big sponsor of the festival. Yeah, and we, we helped we us put worked it together. together on it. Uh, we combined it called it the High Rock Music and Makers Festival, where yeah. had a lot of people that made like handcrafted stuff. Cool. We're selling at the festival. It was pretty cool. 
So we might have to get uh, uh, Oliver Sunflower Oil as a sponsor on it. That's here. right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Something in the. Uh, we'll we'll talk about podcast. that tomorrow, Clay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure. Right now it's free publicity, Clay. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're glad to. First time's free. <laughs> We're glad to <laughs> talk about your sunflower oil. Well, it's, uh, it's funny. I, I was. Uh, last year uh, in Macon, I had. They started uh, the the college in Macon, Mercer University, mm -hmm. uh, teamed up with Rob Evans, and they reopened Capricorn up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had one of the first. It might have been like the first live show they, they had, and they they built an area for live music. And I somehow got to open for uh, Adam Hood. He's a songwriter oh, for yeah. like Miranda Lambert and people like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was funny. I was doing an interview on the Creek, which is a radio station out of Macon, and, yeah. and we were talking yeah, about something. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah speaking of uh, sunflowers, Oliver Farm." And I was yeah. just like, "I'm gonna need a raise." <laughs> <laughs> that was a cool right. experience. Uh, was, yeah, you got a really Brent cool Cobb. Experience. Yeah, Brent Cobb was there. That was yeah, really cool. Adam cool. Hood. You mentioned Hood. He's what from is that? Patterson. Uh, Hood? Or David Hood. I don't know if they're. That was no, David Hood is. That's the, the Alabama Hoods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the. Uh, that's I think Russell Russell Shoals, the Swampers. Yeah. yeah. Patterson Adam Hood is, is. I'm trying to think. I know him. Adam from, actually might be from. I think Alabama he's from Alabama too, Alabama too, but he's a different set. Yeah, different I, I know set him of hoods. from. Yeah. I don't know him, but I I've heard. A, I'm familiar with him from playing in Albany, but I think he's from Alabama, right? Yeah, I think so. Somewhere over that way. Maybe Tuscaloosa. I was going to say Tuscaloosa. Maybe. Yeah. He was really cool though. He he apparently yeah. is him and Brent Cobb work at the maybe I, at the same I played some shows with Dallas Dorsey. Dallas Dorsey, that name's and he played with Adam. Okay. okay, but he also has his own thing too. But yeah. they do a lot of shows together. Have you written any? Um, a little bit, a little bit. Um, I mainly just record for for other people, honestly. The main thing I do is just as far as words and uh, um, songs and stuff like that. I wrote you, a little bit for yeah. Center's Bench. I did a, a little solo thing, um, gotcha. but most of my my solo projects are mainly just instrumental, mainly just steel guitar music. Mm -hmm. gotcha. A lot of people probably don't care to listen to instrumental steel guitar music, but I, it's out there though. I like it. <laughs> did you feel like uh, the songwriting when you first started it and everything was a was uh, a process that it? Uh, I mean, you mentioned earlier that you, you, you found a, a kind of a formula in in the gospel sense, and it's it's it funny. wasn't the same yeah. formula when you moved outside. Not at of, all. The yeah. songwriting is probably the most like rewarding and difficult thing I've ever tried to do because it sure is. The the reason I found it so not easy but more quicker i guess quicker to write a gospel song is that you have a general idea you know you know what it's got to be about yeah yeah exactly there's, there's the, already the like, end of the story is the, there's you already know, a vocabulary good in some yeah. way it's but a, when you're trying to write a good. song that's not about that then it's just a blank page yeah. <laughs> and uh, when i first started uh writing <clears throat> i think it was actually shortly before i was going to start law school and uh jeremy actually told me he's like man you know if you can come up with just a few songs we'll just record an ep and see if it would be worth listening to basically mm -hmm. and um I, I actually don't know where those songs came from honestly because I, I just sat down one week and i somehow just mm -hmm. wrote them and i realized after the fact that that was an anomaly because yeah <laughs> now as i um I'll, I'll wake up you know like several hours before work every day just to try to like continue writing and um also because one of my one of the people I would uh, like, I look up to, I guess, is like Guy Clark, uh, oh, you know, yeah, the man. phenomenal songwriter. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, his advice on writing was just have a pencil and sit at a desk until <laughs> something happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I try to do that, but it's not, it's nowhere near as uh, fluid as those first few songs. Mm -hmm. Well, so, that's pretty impressive that, that uh, you know, and, and it, it is an anomaly when uh, something happens uh, where, it just flows, uh, in, in over over the course of like three or four songs. The first four songs you ever write, if it just flows out of you, you get that kind of well, tricks you into thinking. Exactly, I'm right. a songwriter This is now. gonna be great. It's <laughs> yeah. always like this, yeah. you know. But it ain't, unfortunately. Yeah. Some of them pop out pretty easy, and then others. But you are so right when you say rewarding and 
heart wrenching and heartbreaking and heart aching and hard work. Mm. Uh, it's all of that. And but when you get to the end of it, and when and, when you actually, I, I was, I was and talking to there. a friend. Yeah, when you write something that you that you're like, I created that, yep. and it's actually decent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's worth more than money. I don't oh, pay the light bill, but it's worth more than money. No, it's uh, I, uh, there's only a few fortunates uh, uh, can uh, end up, uh, and these days uh, that's not as as common as it used to be, you know. But can end up writing a song and making money off of it. Yeah, yeah. those days are just about gone. Mm-hmm. Now, but uh, it still don't stop me from wanting to do it. You know, wow. I mean, it's just uh, I've talked to friends uh, that we've had on here that have more or less just turned their back on the process anymore. That now nah, I'm done with the original songwriting. I've 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 made peace with it. I've attempted that direction. Now I'm going in this direction now, and I can't. For the life of me, that just don't register with me because it's just so, so deeply personal, you know that. That's all I ever wanted to do. That's right. Was yeah. to write a song. When, that's why I wanted more. to play a guitar so I could write a song, yes. not right. so I that's could be pretty much the same reason. Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. I wanted to write a song. You know? mm-hmm. That's what uh, I, I'm real, really into. Uh, a few years ago, I got into the, the kind of Texas songwriter scene with Guy Clark and Towns Van Zandt, people mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. I've sort of never gotten over that, and uh, that's why I idolize, idolize those guys so much. Because even, even in you know, like Guy Clark's like late sixties, he was just still writing just painfully yeah. good songs. Cold dog soup. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I agree. I, yeah. It's funny. I was actually it's it's funny you said that. I was in law school like having a weird crisis of uh, you know like mm-hmm. identity of trying to decide if I wanted to be an attorney or actually write songs and i heard uh that entire album of, that's uh, amazing Cold Dog Soup and <laughs> yeah. where he says there ain't no money in poetry yeah. and that's what makes the poets free but yeah and he's sarcastic and he's just freedom, like but i've had all the freedom, freedom i can, I can stand, stand. <laughs> <laughs> good yeah. writing yeah. though man yeah towns van zant standing at the bar skinning a hollywood movie star can't remember where he parked his car or, or, or who he lost, lost the keys. keys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's some good stuff. That whole album is Sis actually. Draper. That was good. One. That that's what, I'm also a big Steve Earle fan. And oh I'm yeah, not man. to nerd out about yeah, Texas we're, we're songwriting, going, but on that album, that Fort Worth Blues. Yeah, so good. Yeah, because Steve Earle wrote that song. No, I think uh, it's the other way around, right? I, I'm confused about that myself because the first time I heard it was Steve Earle. And then when I heard Guy Clark, I just assumed it was Guy Clark's song. This, I can only say I don't. I I haven't talked to him, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> the I, the yeah. only story I know is that um, Guy Clark, uh, Steve Roll tells a story. It's that about he was, Towns. He was touring shortly after Towns died, and he was touring in like Colorado. And uh, Towns had a horse named Amigo that he always kept, I guess, in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And he claims they got in a blizzard and. Uh, Though he couldn't see the road, he claims that uh, the horse Amigo walked up and he wrote Fort Worth Blues after that. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's a great one. story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you did talk to Steve Earle one time, didn't you? I did get a chance to, did yeah. You? Steve Earle is, is a big uh, influence of mine in terms of songwriting. Just yeah. fantastic songwriter. Me, me too. Where did you meet him? He was, um, this was actually before I lived in Macon, but uh, just being where in Wilcox County, the kind of, closest place to see good music is making mm-hmm. and he was playing at the it used to be the cox theaters not cox Park Cap- Ray, but uh yeah, yeah. he was playing there and after the show was over he hung around and Neat. and uh like talked to people and it was it was one of the coolest things because i got to ask him about towns van zandt yeah. <laughs> me and the wife are going to go see him it'll be our <coughs> first time seeing him uh and we're going to go to Montgo- montgomery alabama see him oh that'd be cool fantastic show yeah there was two that was the same distance. There was one, Clearwater, Florida, or Montgomery. I was like, we're going to Montgomery. I'm like, Hank's buried there. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's going to be doing in Florida, but we're going to Montgomery. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, several months ago, I, I got to open uh, at this 
there's a guy named Chris Roberts that had start. He's in the same label as uh, like Blackberry Smoke and and uh, mm-hmm. bands like that. And mm-hmm. he he was trying to. They were just trying to push him, I guess, as like a an artist like Blackberry Smoke along those mm-hmm. lines. And he came through making, and I got to open for him. But the guy that manages the Cox, he was just as he was paying me for the gig, he was casually just like, yeah. Uh, I appreciate you playing. You know, Steve Earle might be coming through town sometime soon. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, we might be looking for some people to open. And yeah. I was like, man, <laughs> I don't want to sound too excited, but I would give you my house. <laughs> <laughs> but it never happened. Never, never happened, happened. Yeah. as those oh. stories do. <laughs> I got that. Uh, well, we already said that, I think. But my old band got to open up for Jason Isbell there. Cool, That's man. Cool. It was the first. Fantastic songwriter yeah. as well. That's, yeah. cool. That's a cool venue, man. Yeah. yeah. Um. No, Marty Stewart in there one night. Yeah, we had Marty Stewart down here at the Grand Parsons. Yeah. Man, he's cool. Yeah, he's yeah, boy, he's he's a legend. He is best hair in the business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah legendary. Man. And that yeah. B bender, old oh, Clarence man. White's yeah. bender, Clarence White. He had that what out there in the fairgrounds. Was talking about dirty. Uh, was it y'all <laughs> that was talking about Marty Stewart offered to buy? Oh yeah, oh, Don, Don Helms. Don Helms guitar. Guitar. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's it's funny. I was just talking he's about collect- that. He's collect. Oh Marty, yeah. Marty is a collector. He's open up a museum. Yeah. He's uh, apparently. Uh, you're uh, talking about he had the B bender though, just like yeah. out and about. I was. Yeah. I have a yeah, friend. I was like, man, put that thing behind some glass. I, I know, know, right? He's I like, we're gonna play. You might have met Shane Bridges in Macon. He's a songwriter up there. Shane Bridges. That sounds he's familiar. Kind of. A, I think he might be in his mid forties, no. maybe. I'm thinking of Shane Brown plays with the Poachers, but uh, yeah, bass player. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he actually, I think he might have like toured for a while. But who, who does he play with? Shane Bridges. He, does he play with? The- he plays by like under his own name now, but he had a band called Acoustic Workshop or something. Oh, dang, that, that sounds, sounds familiar. familiar as hell. But he, he said he actually got to hang out with Marty Stewart one time, uh, and he was like, yeah. He let me play that B bender, and he's what? like, I felt like I didn't need to hold it, really. But yeah. <laughs> That's why I told him we uh, – we were you know, recording for our friend in Capricorn one day, and uh, oh, yeah. I was I was playing sliding there on a song, and I was like, "Man, I feel like Dwayne Allman's ghost is judging me really bad." <laughs> <I'm judging laughs> yeah, just and we found out he was. He was. <laughs> he was. I asked him for some tips, yeah. but he he <laughs> floated off. He's right <laughs> over there. <laughs> um, I was uh, talking about Marty's uh, the B bender of Clarence White. Uh, I read so many uh, print interviews about that very subject, and he said he refuses to clean the dirt out of it. Wow. You know, the dirt still <laughs> behind the pickups and everything is there is actual Maybe Clarence Maybe because White it's Clarence well, I noticed some dirt, yeah. dirt on it because, <laughs> man. I noticed some white cross dirt on it. Because why would you? Ground. You don't want to yeah. change the sound. You don't want to alter yeah. anything, you know. That was the first B bender. Oh my oh, god. Oh absolutely. That was Clarence. Yeah, Clarence Graham would have been white involved in that. And it's, it's two and, telly uh, bodies put Gene together. Parsons. Gene mm-hmm. Parsons and Clarence White were the original creators of creators of the B bender. Now didn't Graham didn't he have some involvement with, with Clarence? Well uh, yes. The, yeah, I mean like, as far as playing together. Yeah. Uh, they hung out, surely. I mean, they, they hung out, definitely. Uh, when Graham left the birds, Clarence joined. Right. And uh, but Well, the whole death pack. The whole death pack. Was because of they were at Clarence's funeral. Funeral, yeah. Oh, wow. And he said, I don't want that. <laughs> and it was so Clarence got ahead. run over by a drunk driver while he was loading Lotus equipment, equipment after up. a gig. And they had this big Catholic funeral. Mm-hmm. And all of the anybody who was anybody was there, the country rock community. Well, Graham and his uh, manager, Phil Kaufman, were mm-hmm. sitting in the audience and they were saying, Jesus Christ, could you get any more boring than this? You know, this this <laughs> funeral is just like, if I die. Joshua would read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I die before you. I want you and and he's a, he's a, if I die before <laughs> you and of course Phil Kaufman says and if I go before you <laughs> well and uh, of course Graham satisfied <laughs> the death pack uh, sooner you know I, I never thought what was Phil's death pack what was his side? it would have been the same thing. Oh, he wanted yeah. to do the same it thing. would have been the same Maybe thing he just whoever bank goes the, first the, drug yeah. the other one his will partner. take our body out <laughs> to Joshua Tree Desert and cremate it. Man. Yeah. Set it free. 
And uh, of course, everybody knows the story now. Uh, it didn't quite get set yeah. free. Yeah, it was. They didn't know the science, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, uh, embalming fluid. Hmm, I didn't realize it made such a big splash. <laughs> But you know, talk, we were talking about just the, the influence that Graham has had on music too. That it's not only the music he made, but also we wouldn't have Amy Lou Harris oh, yeah. we had it not been for yeah. you know for Graham mm-hmm. Parsons and that in itself. I mean, because it, it's funny too, because that crosses the line into she after after she quit uh, singing with Graham. I'm, I'm guessing after he passed away, she actually kind of got in with the Texas scene with like mm-hmm. Guy Clark and. Mm-hmm. The whole crowd, Roddy crowd, Roddy crowd, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing when when you think about how uh, simple uh, it is for for uh, the uh, what actually uh, could have happened in time. You know, if mm-hmm. had what would have happened if John Lennon's daddy had a kidnapped him when he was five years old that day at at, uh, at the shipyard, you know, and took him to New Zealand with him, mm-hmm. sailed off to New Zealand. Well, there wouldn't have been a Beatles. Right. Or or, or it wouldn't have been that Beatles, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it so probably would have. The whole, you know, it's the whole butterfly effect, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, with Graham, you know, what, uh, um, what would have happened if his daddy – had not committed suicide yeah. that Christmas, you know. They would have stayed in Waycross, possibly, probably. And his mom. More than likely. His mom passing away of alcohol. His mama passing yeah. away at, at, at his high school graduation, you know. Yeah. I mean, just it, little things like that, you know, just alter yeah. the whole fabric, you know. And it's crazy to think, too, that even, like, the extensions beyond that. Because if, if I'm not mistaken, the first um, – the first guitar player uh, other than Glenn Fry and the Eagles was a member of the Flying Burrito Brothers prior Bernie to that. Lynn. Bernie Lynn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's actually the, some of that, most of that early Eagles is kind of like the Eagles that I like because it has that country mm-hmm. sound. Yes. And, mm-hmm. I mean, that clearly has to be an extension of the, you know. Definitely. The yeah. Flying Burrito yeah. Brothers because yeah. when, when he left. Oh, they were trying to stop. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they were oh. definitely influenced after that. Uh, Glenn Fry used to put his fringe, buckskin fringe jacket on and hitchhike down the L.A. freeway to uh, – Every time he heard that uh, the burritos was playing out at uh, Palomino or wherever that honky tonk was out in, outside of uh, Los Angeles, he would hitchhike and get a table right in front of the stage and sit there and study Graham Parsons. That was Glenn Fry. He would sit there, you know, it's like this, you know, just fan worship. Yeah. You know, and uh, – I don't know. Uh, you can listen to the Eagles' repertoire, and uh, uh, like you say, the especially the second album, the the uh, Doolin Dalton, the cowboy yeah, yeah. themed album, was uh, very much so. But uh, um, Lion Eyes to me was one of the most very pedal steel, perfectly crafted. <laughs> you know, country rock songs, and you could just imagine, you know. Well, uh, going back to Bernie Ledden, though, Bernie was in the Flying Burrito Brothers with Graham, so they were bandmates. And uh, on the third Eagles album, uh, On the Border, there's a song called My Man, Mm -hmm. which Bernie Ledden wrote, which is in tribute to Graham Parsons. My man's got it made. He's gone far beyond the pain. Mm -hmm. We who must remain. You know, kind of thing is uh, it was a it was a direct tribute to Graham Parsons. So he was he was uh, he influenced a lot of folks. Like you know, with with my first my introduction to Graham was my father's a huge Stones fan. Mm-hmm. All my my whole family there is. There you go. And you know, think about it with him in, on Exile. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, hanging out. Yeah, absolutely. I actually. One of my favorite um, steel players, Al Perkins. Yeah. And I talked to Al not too long ago I met Al. over the yeah. internet, and uh, he uh, <laughs> he he had played with 
with Grant. But Ever, it, yeah, he played on the cash on the barrel. Yeah, yeah. man. And I, that was just kind of wild. I, I mentioned I was from Georgia. <laughs> and he was like, you know, I was just like, man, this is crazy. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I went up to uh, Nashville for a while and stayed with Jimmy, who hooked us up with Don Helms. And um, I was trying to just see what I could do. I, this was, yeah. I was in between bands, but I was just trying to go up there and whatever. And it's almost a pilgrimage. You know? Yeah, I just <laughs> try to do what I could do. And uh, we were living out in Le- Leaper's Fork and uh, lived on the same road as uh, Gravel Road as Al Perkins. And, really? And uh, <laughs> That's crazy. Before I went up there, we my band at the time, Jack Callack, we went out to, t- to Dallas and Texas and uh, recorded. And some of those, a few of those songs... After the fact, Jimmy got Al to play Dobro on one yeah. and then uh, Lap Steel on the other. And then, so when I moved over there, he introduced me to him. And I was like, man, you know, I appreciate it, man. You're just great honor, you know, all yeah. this stuff. And then there was this little art gallery that opened in Leaper's Fork. And it was like, you know, it was a small little community. But uh, they were having a little party or whatever mm-hmm. and uh went in I, we walked in there and al perkins and two or three other guys are sitting in the corner not plugged in or anything just sitting there playing music for just you know real laid back and yeah and i walk in and he goes there's our singer <laughs> oh, i was man. like oh no <laughs> and like I had, I had to step it up quick and uh, man. I, when i sat down and uh I, the first thing they did was uh suzy q and i'd never sang that in my oh, life Lord. and i you know, I can sing it with the radio. Right. Or, you know, know the words with the radio, but I've never had to memorize the words right, or anything. Right. They just start, and I'm like, I was so tuned in. I was like, <laughs> I cannot screw up. And I, I swear I learned, I, 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 never, I didn't mess up a single word. I don't know how great I sang it. <laughs> I don't know how great I sang it, but I, I, I remembered all the parts. And, you got uh, to play with Al Perkins, man. That is and, insane. Yeah. And then uh, they handed me a guitar and, the lady, had, it was a paint, a ga- art gallery, and all of the paintings were horses. So I was like, wild horses. And then, uh, <laughs> oh so, man, yeah. I just sent him an email. Where I was just like, fanboy. And I was just like, yeah. I love you, Mr. Al Perkins. He's way laid back, man. He's so cool. He, he was very nice in the email yeah. or whoever sent it. Uh, maybe his, and his I, manager. I, I even saw him out at one of his shows and he, he asked me to come up. And I, I declined that time because man. I was like, there's, yeah. I don't think everybody else was cool with it. He was, it was like yeah. he playing with some other people. Like, you come up here and like, eh. man, how, how is it like playing up there in Nashville? <laughs> like, like it's weird. Is, isn't it? Uh, is it like I, I a never, time, like a very like strict on the times you get and all that. Uh, yeah, kind of. I, I never really got into it real big. Actually, I, I would end up in some barbecue outside of Nashville mm. or right. just mm. these little spots and uh, or I think Puckett's. In, in Franklin, yeah. I, I played there and uh, a few little things, but I, I didn't play down on right. Broad Street, mm. nothing like that. But I was going to ask you, did you happen to run sound for Tracy Lawrence and Tifton when he played there? Mm-mm. Okay, never mind. I was going to say, I was like, I swear I've seen I, I, you. Wait show. a minute. What was that uh, festival you played at that was somebody was on, on the bill? In Albany or Tifton, weren't, weren't it a festival you played that with, like a Tracy Lawrence or something, something like that on the bill? I played the um, barbecue bl- blues and ribs. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah, in Tifton, yeah. who yeah. was that though? That's Brent Cobb's. Brent Cobb played, there, played there, but he played the year before there was we played somebody there. Somebody big, though. Somebody big was playing. Hey, well, if you Headliner. played there, you might have met too um, the Packway Handle Band. That bluegrass. I've group. heard of them. I have They're a pretty cool, They're cool yeah. man. I think we're all we've uh crossed paths before, but I can't remember where. But I've I've definitely like come in and they just left or vice versa right. kind of well, thing. Well if you were in Tifton, that's pretty much our neck of the woods. Yeah, we're, that's, we're gonna figure this out. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I was just say I know you from somehow, somewhere, yeah. man. I feel like we've somehow yeah. or another because this too there's too much crossing paths. Harvest Moon. They they play that all the time. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. Harvest Moon and uh, I was I was just bothering them on the phone about trying to get a gig. <laughs> yep. yeah. Well, how about this? How about let's. Uh, this has been fun so far. Uh, but how about we uh, 
take a little break and uh, have y'all come back and and, and some do some original songs Sounds good. for Sounds for the like a plan. for the audience right there. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks, with some good original music. Something in my brain won't let me stray. Something in my veins gonna find its way. Something in the water taught me how to pray. This is Matt McMillan in the City Limits, and we're about to play a song I wrote called Take It Out. Yeah. 
This is a song called Santa Fe. <laughs> This western sky always reminds me of a home I'll never know I could have burned your picture, yeah, maybe I tried But I didn't realize that there were some things that I just can't leave behind That familiar empty feeling just won't leave
This last song is called I Guess. Folks, we're back from the break. Some great music you guys just played. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, what can you tell us about them songs? Those was all originals. Yeah, um, the Any, we played three songs. Particular? And yeah. uh, the first, we played a song called "Take It Out," so, uh, Santa Fe, and then a song. One of the first songs I wrote actually that I don't know how the heck it came out uh, called "I Guess." And, uh, Name of it is I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, You're acting. Um, yeah. So uh, the cool. we were talking earlier actually about the the gospel group we were in, and uh, mm-hmm. the lead singer was sort of sort of flighty and <laughs> moved out to Colorado just on a whim. And so that song Santa Fe I wrote was also about her because she she's always just around the country in random places and yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> was uh. You said she, 
She was the original lead singer for Sinner's Bench. Yeah. Was was there uh, romance involved in that? Would in, no? Not with would, us. But not, with <laughs> <laughs> not with us. But there was romance Some center, involved with Some her, her move. I think maybe. I was a different center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, right. that's further down the bench. That's right. That's right. That's a different that's right. bench, maybe. I don't know. Well, well, you know, getting back to that, I mean, she might be watching. But what's her name? Her name is Lindsay Coffey. Lindsay Coffey. She's a, phenom- a phenomenal singer. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we y'all have to check out some Lindsay Coffey there. See how how did she land? Where did she land? Out in Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. She did, but she's actually yeah. back now. Yeah. Oh, so she yeah. sings. She still when Center's Bench plays a show. We haven't been playing much, but when cool. we do play a show, she she usually uh, come and sing a couple a of songs. Little reunion. Yeah, a little Don't reunion. So. That's awesome. She she did ultimately bring the the uh, the reason she went to Denver back with her. So yeah, all right. <laughs> I guess it worked He's out. Here, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it was it a three finger lead? Pot. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know was if you it, could bring that back. But, uh, <laughs> was, it, was it gummies? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That'll, that'll be an off, uh, that'll be a Patreon story we can talk well, about. Well, uh, that's right. <laughs> Speaking of that, I, I appreciate that little, uh, segway. That little, segway. little segue there. We Folks, we do have a, a Patreon account now. And uh, uh, if you'll just take a peek at the link below right there uh, and go to it, uh, you can subscribe to our Patreon account. And, and uh, you can... Uh, have access to some of the uh, raw, edgy, stuff. Uh, uncensored, yeah, something in the water. The uh, we're calling it something in the water, the deep end, yeah. and uh, it's uh, from from the shallow minds of uh, Uncle Dave <laughs> Griffin and Sean Clark, and uh, but it's a little bit uh, out there, and uh, we'll be nude every episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never can tell. No. Send your money. You're, now. you're trying to get people. How to do pay I get my money right? back? That's right. <laughs> we want people to pay. Well, how do I get a refund? <laughs> right. But anyhow, well, folks, I guess it uh, it's about time for uh, a tale of the week from Dog Hill to Tripoli and back from Uncle Dave Griffin. That'd be me. And uh, this week's tale is not in. The book, but it is a relevant story concerning our guest tonight from uh, up uh, just below uh, Macon, Georgia, in Wilcox County. This happens to be a story that happened in my life. Okay, it's called. Uh, <laughs> it has no title, but uh, shall we continue? <laughs> Very good. Hey, man, you're making the rules. I don't know whether I chose art or it chose me. All I do know is I'm glad it happened. So playing music has created a lifetime of friends and some rare opportunities to meet several high-profile associates. And this is the story of one such encounter. In 1977, down-home band and frontman Eddie Middleton returned to the soul food city of Macon, Georgia. Our home away from home for a couple of weeks was a big club located out the gray highway called Uncle Sam's. Directly across from Uncle Sam's was this funky vintage courtesy court motel, the favorite lodging facility of Charlie Daniels whenever he came to town to record at Capricorn Studios. Courtesy Court Motel is where we laid our heads every night. During the day, we'd most often eat lunch in downtown Macon at the celebrated H&H restaurant, home of Mama Louise, owner and genteel lady that the Allman Brothers hired to cook for them on the road. By 77, the Allman Brothers band was no more. They fell apart in 76. Their members were off in different musical directions. Greg, Greg formed the Greg Allman Band. Dickie Betts started up Great Southern. And Chuck Lavelle, J-Mo Johnson, and Lamar Williams formed Sea level Uncle Sam's was a big club. The stage stretched all the way across the back wall with the dressing room positioned down in the right corner. Looking out from the stage, the room was filled with a huge dance floor, tables and chairs, a long bar down the right side, and a little DJ booth tucked in on the left side. We had some times there. 
Once we shared the bill with the White Knight of Soul from Thomaston, Georgia, Wayne Cochran and the CC Riders. Mr. Cochran was a real showman, and his biggest claim to fame is having written the morbid teenage death song, Last Kiss, a big hit for J. Frank Wilson and the Cavaliers and later Pearl Jam. <laughs> Another soulful night was the time we split sets with Percy Sledge and his band. When he struck out on When a Man Loves a Woman, Uncle Sam's dance floor turned into a pool of flesh and sweat. <laughs> Percy was one of several legendary soul singers from the South and a fine gentleman, too. But the night of nights was in the early winter months of 77. We were nearing the end of our third set that night when an entourage strolled in, led by Dickie Betts. He walked up to the lip of the stage, and our front man, Eddie, leaned down to shake his hand. I was immediately in a bit of awe, but what struck me the most was how short he was. What he lacked in altitude, though, he made up with attitude. <laughs> Forrest Richard Dickey Betts was born December 12, 1943, in West Palm Beach, raised up in Bradenton, Florida. His family instilled in him the music of bluegrass and country and western swing. He played guitar in several rock and roll bands before forming the Second Coming in 67 with future Allman Brothers bass player Barry Oakley. The Allman Brothers band came together in 69 in Macon. Dickey was responsible for writing several of their well-loved songs in memory of Elizabeth Reed, Blue Sky, Jessica, Ramblin' Man. In 74, Dickey released a solo album on Capricorn Records called Highway Song, which featured the legendary fiddler Vassar Clements. The entourage Betts strolled in with that night at Uncle Sam's was his new band, Great Southern. Along with them was one Steve Popovich, founder of Cleveland International Records, a subsidiary of Epic Records, where he was responsible for signing and launching the careers of Boston, Cheap Trick, Ted Nugent, Joe Tex, and Dave Loggins, who, as far as I know, still wants his girl to come to Boston. Popovich was down in Macon that night trying to get Dickey and Great Southern to sign with his new label. The Down Home Band was used to covering Allman Brothers songs, so this seemed like a, uh, the perfect time to invite Dickie to join us on One Way Out. After that, the two bands convened in the dressing room as we introduced ourselves, and after a short break, it was decided that Great Southern would perform the final set of the night. The music ended, but the party was just getting started. Uncle Sam's bartender poured us a big box of quart-sized to-go draft beers before we all headed across the street to my motel room at the courtesy court. The next several hours were spent getting loose as a goose and fit to be tied. The high point of the night for me was when Dickie sat down on the bed and played a couple of songs off his solo album on my old Takamini acoustic guitar. I glanced over and saw Steve Popovich, the record label man, pinned in the corner of the motel room by Eddie Middleton, our front man, who was selling himself as hard as he could. <laughs> Before the night was over, Middleton was the new artist that Popovich ended up signing to his new label. Around four in the morning, we were all in need of nourishment, set off for the south side of Macon to Hodges Carousel Lounge, the all-night soul food shack immortalized in Wet Willie's song, Red Hot Chicken. The place was a dive made in heaven. Four mica topped bar counter where we ordered up plates of chicken, tater salad, and greens, listening to funky rhythm and blues on the jukebox, and shooting pool in the middle of the room, surrounded by cheap tables and ladder back chairs. The magical night finally wound down, and as we were making our way to our vehicles, Dickie walked up to his expensive sports car and kicked the crap out of the door with his biker boots. I thought that was kind of stupid, but nonetheless, it was his car, and he was Dickie Betts, former league guitarist for the Allman Brothers, and what he lacked in altitude, 
he sure made up for it with attitude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a night for us right there. That's awesome. That's super so, awesome. Well, folks, we appreciate y'all joining us again for something in the water, and we so appreciate having our our, our good guests from Wilcox County. Yes, <laughs> Matt McMillan and Jeremy King. Yes, sir. Hey, Good thank to you have so much y'all for having so us. Much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And uh, EP out. me? They got an EP out. Tell yeah, us about tell that. Tell us about that. Yeah. yeah. We uh we released a song back in January, now late January, early February, I think, called uh, Take It Out. And it's actually one of the it's the first song we recorded that tonight. You played tonight. Yeah. Good. And, uh, good. Yeah, and I think in a few months uh, we've we've got some new material too with the five piece. We're gonna be going back up to making and recording too. So how about uh gigs? Playing anywhere we, um, that we know for the, of right now. I mean, there's, the there's moment, no telling where when this will come out, but yeah, you know, yeah. If well, it's um, too soon, but what day is that? We we have a gig in uh, Tifton at the Lamplighter Pub, and yeah, we played April, there before. April twenty fourth. Yeah, where, where can they find? Mm -hmm. Where can people find your uh, calendar? Go on uh, Facebook and search Matt McMillan and the City Limits, and you will find all the dates we're going to be around. Awesome. Cool. There you go, folks. Matt McMillan, City Limits. Mr. Jeremy King, also on Dobro and Pedal Steel. <laughs> it's a pleasure to, to meet y'all and wonderful to have y'all tonight. Uh, thank you, folks, for watching, and we encourage you to do all the things. Like, subscribe, rate, <laughs> review, like, what going stream, on. ring yeah. the bell. Mash all the buttons. Call us. Pay them. Yeah. yeah. Show us some love. Uh, subscribe to our new Patreon account. If you uh, if you would like to sponsor the show and uh, get an ad or whatever, just hit us up. Appreciate it, folks. Did you say the email? The email. You can uh, communicate with us on the email as well. Something, Something in the water podcast at Gmail. <laughs> oh, nice. yeah. All right. Next time. When the cold black water finds its way across through your veins, it just might seal your fate. It just might. Just my see your face.